Mm, possible spoilers for Scarlet and Violet for the first half of this video before I dive into my own fake mon and my stem based creature project. If you haven't finished either game, I'll be mentioning leaks and DLC speculations in this first half. If you've seen my videos on past and future Paradox Pokemon, I mention a theory that the reason why these forms are called paradoxes is because they don't actually come from the past or future, but they're rather just imagined to be. A lot of comments mention how this might be a translation error in the Gen 9 leakers part discussing the theory, but there's still this one page from the Scarlet and Violet book that I want to read to you. An imagined Pokemon. A drawing of the fantastical Pokemon as envisioned by our sketch artist. The, the size and ferocity of the, of the strange Pokemon, Pokemon that dwell in Area Zero's lower reaches tickled the artist's imagination prompting to sketch what other species that inhabit these depths might look like. These sketches are canonical fake mon. The sketcher fused the legendary beasts and swords of justice into this weird hybrid. But now, why would they leave these funny sketches in the game? I mean, it could always mean nothing at all, but maybe they'll be featured in the Gen 9 DLC that many of us are expecting. These books also show off sketches of Great Tusk and Iron Treads. Unlike the previous sketches, these weren't imagined because they were sketched by a survey team member and there's a photo of them, but people have pointed out how these look a little different from the Great Tusk we ended up getting. Iron Treads is much closer, but the feet are different in the sketch. Maybe these were beta designs by Game Freak, or maybe they're supposed to be a little different because they're sketches. But what I'm saying is that if we do see the imagined Pokemon in the books realized into actual Pokemon designs, they will probably look a little different from the sketches. So here's my interpretation, starting off with Feral Beast in the Scarlet version. Trust me, I tried to color this with original legendary beasts in mind, but I couldn't settle on a unique color pattern that other people haven't already done. Like, look at this great one by user Nuclear Skin on Reddit. All the past Paradox Mons have this long dino tail, so I tried to extend the smoky part to make the mane into a tail. Fire water type sounds most exciting to be honest. For the ability, I'd imagine that it's just protosynthesis again, but maybe it adds the third legendary's type at least for a stab boost, like Delmite's a steel worker. You know, like give a stab for electric types. For Violet, I have Iron Justice here. To be honest, if anything changes, I'd expect the legs to be detached from the body, as most of the future Paradox Mons have something floating around them. Again, I tried to color this as an amalgamation of the Swords of Justice, but uh, I didn't end up liking that. What would we actually see in the DLC? Who knows? I mean, I'm even just assuming that we'll have a DLC, and I hope we get to know pretty soon. But I've been a-thinking, right? And I've been a-thinking about what we might see in the further future. A few weeks ago, there were these tweets on Twitter about a fan game called Pokemon Infinite Fusion, based off of the Fusion Generator. What was really neat about this project though, is all of the custom sprites made by all sorts of artists. It was very inspiring, and it made me think. Huh, a few generations of Pokemon have had a special section of mons that were kinda core to that generation's theme, and are stronger than most Pokemon, but not as strong as the other legendaries. I'm talking about Ultra Beasts in Generation 7 and Paradox Mons in Generation 9. Looking at this fusion generator, I don't think Game Freak is going to make every fusion combination, but I do believe that one generation, we might see a select few hybrids. So what are hybrids? In biology, hybrid species are offspring of two different species. Now this could happen quite a lot in plants, but there's some special cases in animals, for example, the mules from a donkey and a horse, ligers from a lion and a tiger. But for many of these animal hybrid species, they can't really reproduce on their own, but not all animal hybrids. Let me show you my fusion of Vespaquin and Mega Beedrill. It's based off of the Killer Bee, which was a hybrid of the East African honeybee, and various European honeybees crossbred by humans to hopefully have a bee that makes even more honey. Instead, we got a super aggressive line that attacks 10 times as much. Now Vespadrill here ended up being poison and flying type because I wanted to make this new ability called Bug Core that doubles the damage of bug moves. So it's like a better staff or bug type without the deficits of having the bug weaknesses. 
I mean, if a bug type somehow gets bug core, I'd imagine that this just overrides the stab. So it's not like three times, it's still just two times the power. All right. Future North here, I mentioned how there's a lot of hybrid species and plants. That's because a lot of chromosomes can be mixed around and in fact there could be multiple sets of chromosomes in those plants. It's called polyploidy, where they have multiple sets of chromosomes. So I was referring to hybrids like pluos, which are plums and apricots, or tangelos, which are tangerines and pomelos. Anyways, I tried to make a grass-type hybrid from the Pokemon that we have so far, and I ended up crossing Tangrowth, which is a vine, with Bramblegast, which is technically a tumbleweed, but it has Bramble in the name, so it's like vines and brambles. They're probably close enough to make a hybrid with each other. Though so here's Tanglegast. It's Grass Ghost-type because Tangrowth is just monograss. Instead, they'll have an ability called Grass Core. Again, this would only boost the grass type damage by two times. It won't multiply with the stab. But yeah, that was just a quick addition for y'all. Now, I've been working on something called the Stemma Project, and I have a line that referenced crossbreeding. When you're taught genetics, you're first taught about Mendelian genetics, where the parents each pass down one allele that comes in two types, where one type of allele can overpower the other when expressing a certain phenotype, which is a trait that the offspring ends up having. That's why you see that dominant allele expressed most of the time. Well, in snapdragon flowers, the colors of their petals don't seem to follow Mendelian genetics. So let me first introduce you to the two different forms of Snapeel. No stat changes, just purely cosmetic where one is pigmented to be red and the other is blank. Now, snapdragon flowers go under something called incomplete dominance. Instead of one of the alleles dominating over the other, if two different alleles are present in the child, that child shows a mixture of the phenotypes. This is different from co-dominance, where both of the phenotypes both coexist in the offspring. No, in incomplete dominance, there's like an intermediate phenotype that's not like either of the two alone. Instead of red or white, this offspring is pink, I mean, the offspring are still the same species, they're still snapdragons, they're not hybrid species, they're just hybrid in terms of their genotype. Like, high break here. I used to have the evolution requirement be trading one type of snapeel with the other, but I don't think I'll implement trading when I do make this into an independent game. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to get my mind into at least. I had to revoke the dragon type I used to assign these guys because, well, that's the story for another video. Fusing designs is admittedly a very fun concept, so I hope you get to see them in the future DLC and maybe even more in future generations. And fusion also exists in our world through hybrid species and genetics. I now want to thank my patrons on Patreon for directly supporting my content. The higher tiers have access to behind the scenes sketches and notes about past versions of my designs. I want to emphasize to only consider this if you're financially available, but otherwise, you can subscribe and share the video for free. I got a whole playlist of videos going over my STEM based mods, so thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.